that will stir your thinking and spark the kind of energy that we had when we first heard the truth. When we first heard of Master Father Muhammad, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, and now the honorable Louis Farrakhan. So I bring to the rostrum our brother, who is a young man who has taken on the responsibility of helping the minister who is assigned here by the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, student minister Charles Muhammad. But Brother Hannibal has taken on the assignment of assistant minister. And from what I understand, he has been a member of the Nation of Islam since he was very young. And of course, he grew up in the nation under his mother, who he was born a Muslim. Right. So I bring you one who has taken on the responsibility of helping us in this work of the resurrection of the dead. And I am most curious to learn how he is going to deal with this subject of corruption by our own MO of modus operandi. So I thank you and I leave you and bring before our brother, student minister, Hannibal Muhammad. I thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Oh, man, see, here we go again. Assalamu alaikum. There we go. There we go. Gotta make sure y'all in the building right now. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah <laughs> who came as a man. I bear witness that. Almighty God Allah came in the person of Master Fad Muhammad, the great Mahdi. But he didn't just come and just make himself known. He didn't just come and knock on the door and say, yo, I'm God. But what he did is something that we can really understand and study is the fact that he actually researched and studied to find a people who were removed from a land not of their own. And he would come in and out of this country for over 20 years just to have a better understanding of who we are. He would leave the comfort of his own home and travel 9,000 miles. I don't know if y'all really understand how far that is. <coughs> Right now, we're dealing with monsoon season. It's already hot and it's humidity, and most of us don't want to go five miles down the street. But Almighty God, Allah would go 9,000 miles to come to a people who are considered deaf, dumb, and blind to raise them up to their rightful place. And then, as Sister Aisha mentioned, he doesn't just focus on the cult, the young professionals. He would take one from among us who would not go beyond the fourth grade of education to show us how beautiful and how strong his works is. And he would exalt the most honorable Elijah Muhammad to be our exalted Christ. And he would put on that work for over 40 years. Blood, sweat, and tears. And he would ask Allah for help. Yes. That's right. Well, well. Save his day. Yes, sir. Allah would give him a gift on Savior. Day. Right, right. In 1955, yes. right. he would get the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who yes. is the divinely guided one, yes. who will uphold the torch for Almighty God a lot. I tell you, brothers and sisters, we are truly blessed today. That's right. We could be here any time, but Allah gave us now. But we have a man who is despised by the world, 
who has done everything he can for us and has given us all that he has. Brothers and sisters, I greet you all in the greeting words of peace, of assalamu alaikum. Help me give student minister Aisha and student minister Khalil a round of applause for the open word. This isn't an easy subject, but to me, it's a subject a lot put on my heart that I must address. So inshallah, I'm gonna do the best of my abilities with my limited knowledge to give you something. But Allah teaches us this, because we thank Allah, the originator, for setting into motion the universe with the thought behind it to gain into perfection. He wanted perfection for himself, excuse me, of himself. People will argue that God is already perfect and of course he is. He's perfect in whatever stage and development he is in. But he is present now to perfect us. See, there will be soldiers that will create a perfect kingdom of perfect peace with unlimited knowledge and unlimited progress. Yes. See, we thank him for seeing something in us because there's no way we could have seen what Allah sees in us ourselves. His sight and his love was so perfect that he chose us. He chose us. He chose us to make us his heirs of the kingdom and to make us the heirs of himself. Yes, sir. To make us a nation of gods. Brothers and sisters, we are on a continued journey. And this journey that we are on is a journey of continued demand. We can't go on the journey and expect to chill out like we're on vacation. So what will you give? What will you give to help fulfill what Allah wants of us? And sometimes we may be overcome by duty. Thank you. <laughs> I can't do that. I don't have time. I ain't even got no money in my pocket. So what can I do to help? But believe it or not, that's not what he's asking of us. He's asking and demanding of us to perfect ourselves. Because the perfection of ourselves is the perfection of God himself. Yes, See, when we're confident in building that true love and essence in God, that strikes fear in our enemy. That strikes real fear in our enemy. And why would our enemy fear us building confidence in God himself? Because he knows who we are. But our MO, our modus operandi has been corrupted. So we don't know that we are God's chosen children. It's interesting, yesterday was a funeral I went to. And when you witness death, it puts life back in perspective. We only have one life. And the law gives us the free will within his permissive will to do as we see please with that life. 
And we have an opportunity to grow into a lot himself as he wants of us. Yes, but sometimes we're afraid to do that. And that's why I'm taking on this subject, corrupted by our MO, corrupted by our modus operandi. Brothers and sisters, before I can move forward on this subject, I want to define a few words in the title. Do y'all mind? Y'all no, no, really didn't have a choice, but I still had to ask. <laughs> the first word or words I want to define is modus operandi. It's defined as mode of operating or working, procedures, method of operating. The way someone does something, a characteristic method. And an example the dictionary gives is her, her modus operandi, operandi is buying a new car, always included a month of research. See, her MO is she always does a whole month of research before she makes a decision of purchasing a car. That's her MO. Many of us do not even know our own modus um, operandi and the way we function through it. Many of us don't know. It's usually identified by outside sources such as family, friends, associates, etc. People who have indicated this for us by their interactions, perspectives, and or track record of us. People have viewpoints of us and sometimes we do not understand why. Why is that brother not feeling me? Why does that sister have an issue with me? See, many times we are doing things and with the things we're doing, we think are correct and beneficial to us, but we're getting different results than we want. So we do the same thing over and over and over again, expecting different results. What is that called? Insanity. insanity. We have an insanity MO. And don't even know that we have it because we're doing the same thing over and over and over, expecting a different result. But we've been corrupted. So let's define that other word, corrupt. As an adjective, it's defined as guilty of dishonest practices, as bribery, lacking integrity. It's a key one right there. Crooked, debased in character, Depraved, perverted, wicked, evil. Made inferior by errors or alterations. Infected, tainted, decayed. As a verb to destroy the integrity of, to cause to be dishonest, disloyal, to lower more morally perverted to corrupt, to alter, to infect, to be tainted. Many of us have been tainted in our lives and don't know that we are. We make many decisions in our lives faced off of our upbringing, how we were raised. Right. See, it's interesting Yesterday, we was at the funeral when Bishop Turner was speaking. And he mentioned something in the aspect of we're on the same road, but we're going two different directions. Right. <laughs> and I, at that time, he's fishing. I mean, he's trying to get converts. I'm being honest with you. Yes, but it was a valid point in there. That's right. That's right. We're on the same road of life, but we're going two different Directions. Yes, sir. See, some are in the direction of the fulfillment of God and what he wants of them. And some of us 
or in a direction with a corrupted M.O. following the direction of Satan. Why am I bringing this up to us? Think about this. If our thoughts are clouded, then our decisions are clouded. Which means our MO is corrupted and clouded. That means our actions are actually corrupted. And a lot of times we don't even know we're doing wrong. Brothers and sisters, have you ever had a computer that has been corrupted? Or am I the only one? I'm serious. You're on a computer working on homework and it just crashed on you. And you load it back up and it's moving crazy slow. See, that's corruption, right? Now you got to call somebody in to fix it. That's that outside source that has to come into the inside of the computer and fix it. Well, a lot of times we don't know we're corrupted because we're in the midst of the corruption. Sometimes you need an outside source, almighty God, Allah and his messenger, to put us on a straight path so we can line up and see, dang, I'm corrupted right now. All praises be to Allah. See, we don't always know we've been bit by a snake. We got that venom in us, and it's been eating at our morale. Well, where did the snake come from? Who is this snake? Who is this snake figure that we're dealing with? See, because our MO is established by our character, our personality, the way we function. Our MO is also established by our upbringing, our environment, our influences. And the supreme wisdom, it teaches us that our children should not be watching cartoons and such with animal figures and they're talking. That becomes an influence on our child. We don't know that we could be easily corrupting our children, don't even know what's happening. So it's also established by our actions, our thoughts, and the way we operate. I've said this before. The decisions we make today will impact our lives 10 years from now. So if we took a moment, which we can do, and we think back 10, 20, 30 years, some of us been in the nation for some time now, so it's kind of hard to, to weigh it, but 10 plus years ago, and the decisions you made then, are you still reaping some of those decisions? Are we still having to deal with some of the bad decisions we made in our past? I got a felony, I can't get a job. I got a felony 15 years ago, I can't get a job. But it was a decision that was made that led me to that felony that's impacting me now. So we have to figure out how to maneuver outside of it. So our past and our current MO is either benefiting us or it's harming us now. And the decisions we have made in our lives and the perception people have established about us is determining how we move forward. I have, as you all know, I, I work in a group home. And I enjoy it because I get to be a mentor, a coach, the whole nine yards. I get to help lift up these young men and make them better people. They're already great people. We get to make them a little bit better, right? Yes, and I have this one little brother. He's so smart, so intelligent. But the situation he has is he's always caught up in an environment with the wrong crowd. Yes. Every time. He says, I wasn't smoking weed. But he's always in the environment where there's weed involved. <laughs> and then, even though he may not get caught with it with the contraband on him, right. 
But he's, I'm always getting a call pertaining to a situation with him in the back crowd and there being weed involved. And then when he gets in trouble or restriction, whatever it may be, he'll say, Mr. Hannibal, I'm sorry, I'm a change. All right, sound good. You know, after two, three, four, five times of him crying wolf, the last time he, he said it, I said, can I be honest with you? I don't believe you right now. With the MO you have, I don't believe you right now. Until you change your MO, it's hard to believe because a month or two later, I might get the same phone call. See, a lot of times we find ourselves in situations and we think we're doing something different, but we're actually doing the same thing, expecting different results. So it's hard to trust someone who has a bad MO. I'm just being honest. Let's be honest. If I ask to borrow some money from you all, thinking about can I get some money while we speaking on it anyway, if I ask to borrow some money from you all, and I never paid you back. Would you be happy? No, no, sir. See, y'all saying it nice right now. Y'all know y'all be pissed. Y'all be y'all be slandering, talking behind my back. He that owe me money. Let's be honest. And then look, we're gonna add to that. Let's say you go on my social media and you see I'm having a grandy time. Oh, he in Morocco. That brother owe me two hundred dollars. You would be pissed. You would be so upset. You be you have me out here looking like Lee Daniels and you Dame Dash. See, you know, most of y'all didn't catch that. That's all right. See, y'all know Lee Daniels owes Dame Dash two million dollars, and he had to confront him. Yo, you owe me some money, man. They like this about to scrap too. But the problem is which becomes part of our MO. This MO that we have established damages relationships. It also damages the success of organizations. I broke my word. If we just thought about that and how many times we broke our word for somebody, we might have some corrupted aspects in our MO right now. I committed to doing something and I did not follow through. I promised something and I broke that promise. I lost your trust. See, because it's interesting in Supreme Wisdom, it says, have you not learned that your word shall be bond regardless of whom or what? But it's interesting what the answer is after he says yes. My word is bond and bond is life. And I will give my life before my word shall fail. See right now we're not trying to give our lives. Because if our life was on the line. We'll be purifying some of that corruption in our own MOs right now. And I'm speaking to myself. I know y'all perfect. Y'all perfect out there. See, if we live by that motto, we will actually break the corruption of our MO and actually start purifying ourselves. And see, and that purification as a unit actually creates a standard for other individuals to elevate through. Because if other people are around you And this is the standards you live by Either they're going to want to step up Or they're going to step out Which means they expose themselves As being corrupted Or as one of Satan's dumb devils Because we would know Well brother, sister look, No, 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 no Our word is bond This is how we function Well man, I can't do that just like in the scriptures, they, they praise, they say that they're with them, but then they go behind closed doors and say they're not with God himself. We know they're out there. We know they're out there. See, I may not even know that I have this habit of breaking my bond. 
Sometimes we don't realize how many times we broke our bond with someone. It becomes second nature because we do it so often. To some of my Muslims, you know, when we start saying, Inshallah, right. <laughs> uh-oh, I might have started something. I might have started something. When we start saying, Inshallah, that's like, I don't know, I might show up. Right. Right. See, we used to be like, yes, sir, right. I'll be there. Right. Now we're, Inshallah, right. Mashallah, <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> That's usually the response when you do show up. <laughs> All praise to be. I just got to bring a little humor. I know this is a serious subject. But the victim in me gets mad when I ask for something and you won't give it to me. I break my bond. I got a corrupted MO and I want something from you, but you won't give it to me. Now I'm pissed off at you. I'm playing the victim. But what we don't understand is that victim mentality in us is actually a little Satan in us. And we may not even be aware that he, Satan, is sitting in that little place. Interrupting the way we function, which I'm saying, if we go back to the computer, Satan is a virus inside of our mental. But Satan told God... He told God that he would be in front of us. He would be behind us. He would be on our left side and our right side. And if we think about when the son of God actually was going to see God, he was accompanied by the devil himself and did not know that the devil was with him. So we have a devil that's been coming along with us and sometimes we don't know he's sitting there corrupting every move we make. We may have the right intentions, but for some reason it always comes out wrong. Mm. So when we start taking on the ways of this world, we start taking on the M.O. of this world. Well, whose world is this right now? Whose world is this? Because if we're taking on this world, we're taking on Satan's world. And that means we're taking on the M.O. of Satan. And trust me, he's putting in work trying to exalt us in his ways. Even when you go to scripture and we look at Judas... See, Judas, he had a noble motive when it came to the woman rubbing the feet of Je- or rubbing the, um, the feet of Jesus with the oil in her hair. And Judas would say to Jesus, well, we could take this oil and sell it and give back to the poor. See, that sounds great. Yeah. That sounds, am- man, you know, you're right. We could do that. But Jesus reminded him, well, brother, look. Y'all only going to have me for a little, but you'll have them for a long time. Let me have this for a moment. But what he was also exposing in that was, I see you. I see you. I'm not going to expose you to them because that's not for me. That's for you and them at that time where it comes. But I see you. See, it wasn't that Judas really cared about giving it to the poor. See, he was dealing with something called jealousy and envy. See, that's corruption right there. See, your own, your own A1 is jealous and envy of your success. See, sometimes we can be corrupted and not even know we're corrupted. And he got so jealous and envy that he would even turn God's man into the law. You're supposed to have my back. Or we go to the serpent in the garden from Genesis 3, 4, and 5. And it said, the serpent said to the woman, you surely, you surely will not die. Dang, he got that much clout. For God knows that in the day you eat from it, it, your eyes will be open. And you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So they ate from that tree, became corrupted. 
Then you go to 2 Corinthians 11 and 3 to say, but I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, your mind will be led astray from simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ. A lot God wants things so easy for us. So, so easy for us. Simple and pure. And if things seem to be a little extra harder than it should be, we might need to take a step back. And figure out, why isn't this easy as it should be? Maybe I'm trying to do too much. Maybe I have some negative influences around me right now that's corrupting the way I operate. Because Jesus had the same situation talking to the Jews. In John 8 and 44, he said, you are of your father the devil. And you want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Wherever he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own nature, corruption. For he is a liar and the father of lies. Brothers and sisters, we have truly been corrupted by these four devils. And anybody know any Nas songs? Y'all heard it before. Lust, envy, hate, and jealousy. If we really think about it, those are different demons that we're fighting every day in our lives. We're fighting lust. We're fighting envy. We're fighting hate. And we're fighting jealousy. And when they enter the mind and the hearts of a person, they corrupt the thoughts and the actions of a person. And we don't realize we've been corrupted. See, when we're losing power, it's natural to try to take control of everything around you. Even though we should just step back out of the emotion and be logical. What's going on? Why am I losing this power? But when we've been corrupted, we do not understand why we're losing the power. So then we react a certain way and it causes more mayhem than it should. So brothers and sisters, every time we open these scriptures and study the works of God and his words, we see his prophets, his messengers, messiahs, and servants. We're able to learn what MO he is requiring of them, which is the same MO he's requiring of us. All we have to do is compare how they were living and how they are living their lives, and we measure how we're living ours. Does that make sense? Yes, I just want to make sure I ain't leave no longer. Yes, the only way that we can equal on the inside the pressure that is coming from the outside is through our faith in God and our efforts to live the life that he prescribes. See, what I love about Almighty God Allah, he is the best of M.O. He got the best one. See, Allah is the creator of the heavens and the earth. Yes, See, there's an action word in that sentence. What is it? Allah is the creator of the heavens and the earth. The action word is creator. See, creator, he creates. Not only does he manage our affairs, he creates the circumstances that we maneuver through. See, many of us just manage our affairs. We just manage whatever law puts in front of us. But see, there's a difference between management and leadership. See, management takes something that you give them. And they just maintain the status quo. They might take it a little bit higher. Beyond whatever they was given. 
See, Allah, he creates through leadership because he took a nobody like us. And as we look up, we watch ourselves be lifted up day by day in him. That's leadership. And so we take on the mindset of leadership that puts us in the creative genius to create and manifest as God desires of us. That takes us on the process to get on that Dragon Ball Z Super Saiyan level. Y'all don't know nothing about that. But it does. See, that removes fear from our entity. We can't be afraid to look in the mirror and challenge our fears. So we must challenge the fear of failure. We can't be afraid to fail at things. We must challenge the fear of the unknown. I don't know how the outcome's going to be. We must challenge the fear of success. I'm afraid to be successful. And if we really got to the root, many of us are afraid to be successful. And a lot of that comes from a corrupted environment, a corrupted um, upbringing. I remember one day, student minister Tony had said in a meeting, before, right during the time we was going into Dianetics, he would explain about how when he was growing up, he was told by his family he would be nothing. So he didn't want to be nothing. But as he went through dying, he started seeing all that charge coming off of him. See, sometimes we grow up and our parents and we as parents may say stuff to the child. Out of the anger that we have towards the other parent. Your father wasn't nothing, you won't be nothing. That's the instilled in ground in that child. We have planted a virus of corrupted, changed their MO so they don't want to grow up and be nothing. Your father went to jail, you're going to go to jail. And we take on that valence. See, the Holy Quran mentions very little of love, but it mentions duty. And this excuse me, connotation, if you tell someone that you love them, love becomes a verb. That's right. Duty denotes some activity that expresses the love that you have. So when we say I love you, I have to be able to, I have to, be able to show I love you. Right. I want that woman to be my wife. I love her. Well, brother, you live with your mama, man. What you gonna do about that? <laughs> hey, man, brother, you catching the bus right now, brother? I don't know. Man, brother, you staying with brother so and so and so and so, brother? I don't know. That equation ain't adding up. That love ain't adding up. Sometimes we don't realize, oh man, you know what? I thought that was cool. Corrupted. My MO jacked up. Brother, you got a bad MO, brother. I'm just being honest. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Now, you and I continue, you and I can identify our MO. It does take some work, though, but it can be done. I recommend that we do it, excuse me. I don't know what that sentence says. <laughs> <laughs> I recommend that we do it and we learn about ourselves. See, this is what we need to do. Okay, that's what I was leading to, okay. I'm giving the little layouts on how we can fix our MO. Inshallah. <laughs> Hope it goes to a mashallah. And then we can end with alhamdulillah. <laughs> we must study the type of person we are. First and foremost, we must study self. <laughs> we, must study self. <laughs> we, must study self. <laughs> we 
We must study the characteristics we possess. What kind of character am I? We must study the environment we create and the influence we have on other people. As we start going through that, we can see how do we respond when people ask of us. Are we bringing hope and positive changes in the lives of ourselves and others? Or are we causing mayhem? If we're in a situation <laughs> and for some reason nobody never invites you nowhere, just might have a jacked up MO. <laughs> Every time I write this brother out, he always talk about how much he hates the mosque. Yeah, brother, I don't want that negativity. You got a negative MO. Every time I go out, you know, we trying to go out and go get something to eat, he ain't never got no money. Hey, I have friends like that. You got a broke MO. This is real life, though. We actually have some courses. I want y'all to understand this. We actually have some courses that actually help to establish and build strong, positive MOs. Y'all didn't seem enthused. <laughs> we do. We actually have courses that does that. And if I were to offer these, these courses to you, would you be interested in joining and going through the process? If so, raise your hand. Okay. All praises be to I got you all on the hook. All for a low price of $9.99. <laughs> I'm going to show y'all. Y'all ready? All right. All right. Are you sure you're ready? It's a great course. All right. We have these courses every Wednesday and Friday at 7.30 at study group. No, that's, that's honest truth. This is how you know they don't come out. See how low those claps are? That's how you know. But if we really were to be honest about fixing our corrupted M.O. and building a positive and stronger M.O., you will understand the value of Wednesday and Friday night study group. Yes. Why is that? Because it's called self-improvement, the basis for community development. Yes, sir. Yes, that's right. The whole course is self-improvement. It's the process of purifying ourselves to remove the corruptedness that's been living inside of us. The little demons and devils and satans that have been in us for so long that as we go through these studies and we line ourselves up with the thinking of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, as we line ourselves up with the thinking of the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan, as we start cracking atoms upon one another, learning the thoughts and the minds of each other, we start seeing certain charges come off of us. And we're actually going through a purification process. For my brothers and sisters in the nation who been here for some years, you remember when you first joined? You was at every study group. Energy was crazy high. Can I say crazy high? I'm going to say it anyway. Energy was really high. <laughs> you enjoyed yourself. You didn't want to go home. See, we're removing the bad ways of our lives. Yes, and we was purifying ourselves. So when it came to Friday, when it came to Saturday morning, we was out in the field, brothers. Yes, sir. Right. When it came to Sunday morning, we had the mosque filled, brothers. Yes, right, brothers. But it starts from studying self. Yes. See, right now, if we can't fill a mosque or a building that says there's something corrupted in our own MO. Right. I know I'm getting off that subject. I might get beat up after the mosque. Let me leave that alone for a minute. No, come on. Which I know I'm speaking truth. Because I'm a victim of it myself. See, I said victim, right? See, that's the Satan living in me. Instead of me taking ownership, how quick it came out. Mm. So, in our courses, so I had to bring one up. This is what the books look like. One of them. This is actually self-improvement course number one, study guys one through four. And one of them, there it goes, is titled Building Human Potential. And I'm just going to take these last two paragraphs and read to you if you don't, y'all don't mind, do you? I, you know, y'all really didn't have a choice, but I'm going to say it anyway. If Malcolm X 
with an eighth grade education, accomplished what he accomplished under the guidance of the, of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, read every book in prison library, begin with the dictionary, if individuals and people can manifest hidden beauty and potentials through reading, then each one of us must challenge our aversion to reading and to begin and begin to read, read, read in the name of thy Lord who creates. Creates man from a clock. Read in thy Lord is most generous, who taught men by pen, taught man what man knew not. These are the two lost arts among our people. Reading and writing. That's right. Use of the pen. If there is one among us who cannot read, that is one too many. If one of you is unable to read, then we shall establish a reading class. So we will get a reading class if some of you can't read. That's, that's not hard. We can make that happen. But there's a lost art here that we are struggling in that's allowing us to be corrupted because we're not opening these books. And when we don't open up the books to see what a law God is manifesting for us, we can see what's happening in the world and saying, whoa, it's right here. Right. And then as we read, we pick out a pen and paper and we start shotting down things that we're learning. Then we go to a dictionary and we pull up words to get better understanding. As we start going through that deeper understanding, it starts to remove the corruption, the viruses that are living in us, the parasites that are living in us, the jealousy and envy that is living in us. That's right, All we have to do is start reading and writing. But, excuse me, that type of guidance and study develops quickness, fast moving, cleanliness, internally and externally, right down to the modern time. Yes, but we can't procrastinate with that if we want to grow and purify ourselves. See, my big brother, Brother Nuri Muhammad said this, procrastination is anti-God. I don't think I heard what I just said. <laughs> Procrastination is anti-God. We're taught that we're his image and likeness. We can't grow into his image and likeness if we're procrastinating our own self-development. And then the Holy Quran 1823 says, and say not of anything, I will do that tomorrow. So we can't have slowness. Right. We can't be sloppy in this. Right. See, being mindful of our thoughts and actions help us to move faster. Yes, sir. Being mindful of what we take into our bodies helps us to become cleaner. See, we can't study and then take in toxins because now what we took, what we study, becomes corrupted by the toxins. That's right. See, that allows us as we study to submit to do the will of God. And if we're submitting to do the will of God, that allows our admission to become a God. Y'all didn't hear me. It's all right. It's all right. Our submission to do the will of God is our admission to become a God. But we have to be willing to submit first. Oh, I got there by myself. I didn't need God help. See, once you give yourself totally to God, this is from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Once you give yourself totally to God in absolute love for him, that's the beginning of the release of your power. You must love him who gave it all to you. All right. <clears throat> We make ourselves more powerful than God is. At least that's what we think. That's a corrupted MO. That's the purification, or that's the beginning of purifying a corrupted MO. And closing the gap, on page 47, it says, 
For Allah, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave, he sacrificed him, and the son was willing to be sacrificed. I have no life of my own. My life is for the redemption of a people, and that is pretty hard. However, that is the necessary requirement to affect resurrection, redemption, restoration, and reconciliation of the soul that is lost. And it says, in concluding, when a person is like that, he has no sin. He has shortcomings. For sure. And he may commit sin, but by his long suffering and continuing to pull on the good nature of Allah, God, and the people to make them better and better and better. Allah, God, just wipes away the sin that he has and throws it into the sea of forgiveness and covers his sin. Because of the work that he does of redemption, that is why Jesus is looked at as absolutely perfect and sinless. That's right. Brothers and sisters, we're going to commit sin. We're going to get viruses. We're going to have shortcomings. But if we're willing to suffer and continue to work harder to try to build up ourselves, if we're willing to challenge the different things that are causing our shortcomings, Allah, God himself will wipe away yes, them sins. You ever made a mistake and you knew you was, getting, you was going to get in trouble, but then you didn't get in trouble? Yes, sir. See, sometimes you have to weigh the positive to the negative. We can't always beat up on ourselves on the negative things that happen in life. Those are shortcomings. But did you try? Did you give your all? Did you fight against that fear you had to do it in the first place? Then get up and keep going. See, our MO has had a major impact on why we won't unify with one another. Yeah, I said it. Who trusts someone who has bad credibility? See, when I talked about money earlier, that's bad credibility. See, when, when will we realize how beneficial we really are to one another? See, right now, we don't see that value in each other yet. But Allah is still forcing things in place that's forcing us to have to work together. But we still don't see the value in each other yet. See, all these businesses are shutting down right now because they're saying and doing things that's pissing us off, even though we could have, been, we could have shut them down years ago. So Allah is intervening in our affairs to force us to come together. My sister's in the front row. She's going to be mad because I'm about to put her on blast. But we bump heads at times. But when we got a whooping and mom was like, y'all better fix it, we fixed it. Allah is going to have to give us a whooping if we do not figure out how to get along now. And we do not want that chastisement. See, because there's no future in this, there's no future in us trying to make this America the dream that it wants to be. It's a straight up illusion. And it's not working for us. Right. See, God wants to separate us and give us a land of our own with him as the ruler over it. That's right, but the enemy doesn't want that, so he's constantly dropping viruses to distract us and seeing if we'll bite at the bait. Because right. see, now it's funny, there's more people like Mr. Papa John's. Yeah, I know you heard about Mr. Papa John's. He used that good old N-word. Yeah. <laughs> if y'all didn't know. But see, it's, it's, it's interesting because what's happening with somebody like that, they're continuing to come out because something is deep-rooted in their heart on how they feel about us. And the law is forcing them in situations where they can't hold it in no more. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
And see, his MO is greed. Yes. And see, what he failed to realize when he went into that contract with the NFL, so he'll be the endorsed pizza company, he didn't realize we were serious about boycotting the NFL. Right. I know some of y'all watched the game. It's cool. I know some of y'all did. Y'all team got into the playoffs. I get it. But what he didn't consider was that we were really demanding a change. Y'all upset with Kaepernick for not saying anything, but he took a knee? He ain't running out on the field acting now, but he just sat in his own area being peaceful. Can I give y'all some stats real quick? I love giving out stats. So we know that since Kaepernick, we started boycotting the NFL, right? Last year's Sunday night football results came in at, excuse me, 18 million. 118.175 million ratings, right? But they're down 2 million. So when I throw that large figure, I don't seem like a lot, but people don't, y'all don't understand, the NFL is the, mo the highest watch and the most watched sport or entertainment in the world. For the ESPN Monday Night Football, for last year, came in at 10.757 million. It's down 1 million view ratings. And if you look at Thursday Night Football, it's at 10.937 million. It's down nearly 2 million. And the experts in this space reported that the NFL's regular season ratings overall were down 9%. Versus its audience a year ago. If we think about the boycott we had leading through Christmas, we're taking the same stand against the NFL. And what's happening is, as we boycott against the NFL, they lose money, right? Yes, sir. The different people who would normally endorse or try to buy contracts into the NFL for ads, they step back because they know they're losing money. That's right. That's right. It's called a domino effect. That's right. Come on, break it down. See, that's the reason why Mr. Papa John's is pissed because he fell into that domino effect That's right. and he didn't reap from it. He reaped what he sowed. So it's interesting to see that he had a corrupted mind of greed. His MO's greed. Now he upset. He like, them niggas messing up my money. And next thing you know, he was like, oh, really? I ain't like your trashy pizza anyway. That's good. Now everybody like, yep, no Papa John's. So now the question becomes, are we going to increase Domino's money um, revenue now? Are we going to increase Pizza Hut's revenue? You know, I'm a pizza fanatic, so... Don't let me be back east. It's the first place I stop when I touch down, so I can't help it. But <laughs> I got to bring a little humor, brothers and sisters. I have to bring a little bit. Um, I already said that. Said that part. Okay. <laughs> Think about this. What if we started purifying our MO and the people who had noticed that we had bad MOs, started seeing a different MO out of us. What do you think that would do to them? See, many of us can bear witness to that. Before some of us joined the Nation of Islam, for our guests and visitors who may not know, might have sold drugs, might have been addicts, might have sold their body, might have did a lot of different things that would not be pleased to talk about now. But they think what they got from this that helped to purify the way they used to function. They wanted to change the MO and through that process, friends and family may not have accepted it. Talked the negative about them, disowned them from the family. No longer got invited to the family reunions and the cookouts. They got tired of them talking about take that pork off the grill. <laughs> but one thing they do know Anytime that, that, that good old believer Did something they weren't supposed to do They was quick to bring it up You know you ain't supposed to be doing this 
See, that's because they're always paying attention. They're watching the change manifest in front of their eyes. They just may not be ready to do it yet because they're watching you and us to see, is he doing it right? Is he going to make it? Is he going to last? Because if he can do it, then maybe I can do it. Sometimes we're the biggest examples and don't even know we're that example. But I tell you, brothers and sisters, this is the place for you. I tell you, this is the place for you. It takes work. This is not something that will be done overnight. But with our heart and our mind, we must identify what it is that's keeping us from our success. Yes, sir. As I prepare myself to close, to the nation of Islam, our standard of MO is the MO of a savior. I want you to think about that. Our standard of MO is the standard or the MO of a savior. That is our standard. And the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is our measuring stick to it. See, when people see and meet us, they should see the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. That's right. They should see the minister manifesting through us. That's right. Because when they see the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, they see the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. That's right. And when they see him, that means they're seeing Almighty God Allah who came in the person of Master Father Muhammad. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because the minister is the direct connection. He is the lead wire to God himself. That's right, brother. And if we're lining ourselves up to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, that means we're purifying ourselves and all the bad decisions we made of the past can be wiped away like that sea, like that sin into the sea of forgetfulness. Yes, sir. Mm, mm, mm. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad wanted us in a vanguard position. Right. He didn't want us to follow others. Right. He wanted us to be what the Quran says. You are the best nation and raised among men. Yes, sir. For you enjoy good and forbid what is evil. Yes, sir. To our guests and visitors and listeners, your standard of MO comes from this. Genesis 1, 26 through 27, where it says, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. Your MO is to become a God. That's right. I know that seems so far out in the world. It seems so far out there. But it's not. It's not. The first step is actually studying self and developing self. Yes, then as we develop self, we master self. Yes, sir. And as we master self, we're able to master the obstacles that are put in front of us. Yes, and they don't shake us or wave us away. They become easy. We maneuver in peace. Yes, sir. And once we start mastering these things, a lot God continues to exalt us that we will have God power amongst men. Y'all don't have to believe what I'm telling you. Jeez, we cannot continue to read these scriptures and not see ourselves in them. We only have one life. And the law has given us everything we need to grow into himself. And what he desires of us, we just have to be willing to submit to it. Feeling unworthy of God's eminence. This is from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. 
Feeling unworthy of God's imminence, grace puts our mind in a state of humility and deep gratitude for that grace. If you keep that state of mind, you will continue to grow in strength. We need some soldiers, man. Right. Just being honest with y'all. Right. We need some soldiers. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, because there is a need in our community for a universal change. Yes, sir. And see, that change starts with the men. Brothers, we have to step up and change the MO of our community. Because until we change the MO of our community, we will not earn back the respect from the women and children of our community. Being a man of God means being a man possessed of the knowledge, the spirit, and the power of God. Anointed to do his will. To build a people, we first must make man. So every man, no matter, no matter of his color, no matter of his race, every man in order to be a man must be a man of God or he's not a man at all. Let us make man today. There will always be an obstacle to any great desire that we have. But it's the overcoming the obstacles that brings joy to the accomplishment of our desire. We must put on the armor of God, brothers and sisters. So that we will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. As I get ready to close, I'm going to say this to you all. Pastor Turner, Bishop Turner said something else yesterday. That was very interesting, but no disrespect to him. My humble opinion, he got it wrong. He talked about the brother being a caterpillar. And he talked about him crawling. We are like, we are all caterpillars in this world. We're all crawling through this world looking for a better life. But see, what happens is that caterpillar has to find a cocoon that he can rest and better himself out of. See, that cocoon is the nation of Islam. So that's the cocoon that us caterpillars got to get to. Because when you look at these brothers and sisters who came through the nation, yes. you will see that they grew from caterpillars to butterflies. Yes. And see, their wings, not like angel wings, but their wings are like birds. Yes. And those wings are expanding and coming out so strong that we're able to rise above the ways of the world. Yes. And as we rise up, we're able to look down at the distractions and come down and swoop up our people. Brothers and sisters, we are what we are and we have to go after it. Thank you for listening. Assalamu alaikum.